Hello everyone, in this little video I want to show you how I create a lead tone, a singing lead tone with the archetype Nolly plugin from Newell DSP, which I really like, especially for lead tones. I know many people use Pliny, Soldano and of course now the new Petrucci plugin more, but I want to do something different. I want to show you how I create a lead tone with the Nolly plugin and with the amp number two, which is a modded Marshall, I believe. It's a modded Marshall from Nolly himself. Uh, I always loved Marshall for lead tones. I have my GVM behind me. Yeah, here you can see I have a preset M2 lead and it's the matching cabinet with the M2 and at first just hear how it sounds. <laughs> Yeah, that's my lead preset for the M2. Let's jump straight to the default setting because I want to show you how I created this lead tone from scratch. So this is the default setting and as you can see it's the M3. This is a 5150 model I think. And let's switch to the M2 with the matching cabinet. By the way, for the cabinet I leave it just in the default setting. It's an SM57 and in my opinion you can't go wrong with an SM57. It sounds always great in my opinion. So the default setting M2. First thing just here how it sounds. <laughs> You can clearly clearly hear that uh, the amount of gain is really low and the sound is very flat. So the first thing I do, I hit the bright switch here because lead tones, I always want lead tones a little bit brighter. And so here we have a bright switch, so activate that and I push again. I don't push again that much, but in this particularly ensemble, I, I do that because that amp alone has not that much gain. Of course it's not enough. Let's go to the pedal section. So here we have an overdrive 1, which is I believe an Ibanez Tube Screamer model or Maxon 808, just something like that. And let's kick this in. For the overdrive pedals, I always use more the level knob. I turn the gain down. I don't turn it down completely, just a little bit. And I use more the level knob to push the amp more, push and boost the amp. And tone it a little bit up, just get a little bit brighter tone. And Again, just here, how it sounds. We are getting closer. So, in my opinion, it's not enough gain at that point. And here is something I don't do usually, but in this plugin we have two old wife pedals. So, and of course, always try new things and let's click in the second overdrive pedal. I do the same thing, the gain a little bit down, volume up and here we have two EQ knobs, treble and bass, turn the bass a little bit down, treble a little bit up because 
uh, for my taste, I don't want that much low frequencies in in a lead tone, lead solo tone. Of course, it's a matter of taste, like always. So again, let's hear how it sounds. <laughs> Now we are talking, I like it, for the amount of gain, but as you can hear, it's completely dry sounding. And that's where the post effects comes in. So for the delay, I always want to hear the, the repeatings of the delay, so let's, let's Activate it and see how it sounds. And of course, it's too much for my taste. So the mix knob a little bit down. I always leave it like that, leave it there. So one thing I do with when I dial in a delay setting, I always want to hear the, the reflections, the repeatings, so the echoes. And I do that just hitting the strings while I'm muting with the threading hand. And just hear how the reflections sound, also how the echoes sound. And with that, I can hear that it's too fast and a little bit too many echoes for my taste. So just deactivate the sync settings. The water notes I, is really is good. And I always want to use so around 300 milliseconds with quarter notes. Just here. So for the tempo, sounds pretty nice to me. But the amount, the amount of echoes is a little bit too much. So let's turn down the feedback knob a little bit. Here again. Now I hear three repeatings. which is good for me, for my taste. And one thing I want to mention is the low cut. I just use the low cut a little bit and the high cut uh, a lot more because I don't want, I don't want uh, the super high frequencies in the echoes. So I use the high cut very, very extreme setting. Not that, but just Let's see how it sounds. Yeah, modulation. Uh, I don't want that for that standard lead sound, so I leave it at zero. Yeah, that's it for the delay. Reverb. Reverb is a thing, I don't use it that much for lead tone. It's nice. Uh, in a mix, I almost don't use it, but uh, for playing just like that, and uh, I use it, but only a tiny little bit, because when you overdo it, overdo it with the reverb, uh, it's going really muddy and washed up really fast. So be really careful with the delay. Let's engage it, and with these settings, I think it's. Definitely too much. Yeah, it's too much. It sounds great, the reverb itself, but it's too much in the background for me. So the same thing with the delay. Low cut a little bit, high cut more. And I like to have uh, IRDK, but uh, 
with the mix knob I tone it down pretty drastically. So just a tiny little bit. <laughs> That's pretty much it for the FX settings. Let's go back to the amp and for the amp, one thing I, not always, but I very often do is turn the bass a little bit down, the mid to taste. And this amp has a lot of mids. Um, had this, this uh, Marshall, I do I describe it, these barking mids. It's always the Marshall mids are always so bulking mids, which I really like for lead tones. Then for a little bit more treble, a little bit presence. Definitely is about the overall low end, and I don't want it that much in my lead tone. You can go with the level a little bit up. It depends how you set the master. Yeah, the mid maybe a little bit more. <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, for creating a lead tone. I hope you like it. If you want me to do another videos, maybe rhythm tones or clean tones, just let me know in the comments. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye bye.